Okay, so welcome back. Um, this is part two in our series on understanding electronics. Uh, in the first video, we talked about trying to get a physical concept uh, to help us understand electronics. You know, usually when you um, you read about or you watch videos on electronics, they, there's a whole lot of equations, and for, I think for a lot of people, it's very difficult to comprehend what all those those equations mean. So what I generally do in anything that I'm trying to learn is I try and bring it into the physical world, analogies in the real world, so I can understand stuff that I can touch and see and feel and, and actually operate, uh, rather than just regurgitating equations. What we're going to do here is we're going to take the next step, where now we, we have a basic understanding of how a MOSFET works um, by comparing it to a simple water valve. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that the next step and we're going to actually simulate a MOSFET in some software, which allows us to take a model of a MOSFET and change the values and see what happens and change the voltages and see what, how the currents change and get a much better understanding of how the MOSFET works. Uh, so that the step after this we'll be able to take is actually do some real-world bench testing and we'll, we'll take a MOSFET or multiple MOSFETs and we'll hook them up in circuits and we'll measure, we'll apply, we'll apply voltages and we'll measure and we'll look on the oscilloscope and see what the results are and see how well it, it matches what we modeled and it will allow us to get a much better understanding of, of the real-world application. So now here we are in LT SPICE and I showed in a previous video on basic electricity, uh, how LT Spice works and how to set it up. So you can take a look at that if you're not familiar with LT Spice. Uh, but it's a really wonderful free application that allows you to model electrical and electronic circuits. So if we're going to, to simulate a MOSFET, we first need to have a model uh, to put inside LT Spice that we can connect up to a circuit and simulate it and see what happens. So um, there's a number of different ways you can get the models for, for a MOSFET into LT Spice. But before we uh, bring in a model into LT Spice, what I like to do first is figure out what type of model I want to use. And generally, I'm looking forward to the future where I'm probably going to want to bench test the model like we're going to do in this series. So I want to find a model that is not only available on the market, but also has some available uh, LT SPICE models or SPICE models that I can use to simulate it. So I can simulate it. And then I can, you know, spend a few dollars, buy it, put it on the bench and test it, and I'll be able to compare. Um, it's kind of frustrating if you're, if you, if you do an LT Spice simulation, then you want to do a real world um, test of it, bench test, but there's nothing out there that has the same model name that's easily available. So, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run over to Amazon. And here's an Amazon web page where I've, I've done a search for MOSFETs. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different types. Um, here is a nice set of many MOSFETs for $17. And you can see that the model number starts with IRF. And that uh, stands for International Rectifier, right? Um, I've found that international rectifier is usually not only a lot, uh, has a lot of availability on places like Amazon, but also they have a whole lot of SPICE models that you can use. So you can go through and you can check uh, some of these, but you see here's some more IRF models. Um, so I would consider, uh, if you're going to actually do some bench testing, that you first check to see what's available and maybe even actually buy them and then see if you can find the SPICE models um, on the internet or in the internal models of LT SPICE. Okay, so let's just uh, we'll take a look at this set of 50 different MOSFETs and let's just randomly choose uh, IRF540N 
And if we buy this box of MOSFETs, let's see if we can, we can get a model available for this IRF 540N MOSFET. And again, it's an international rectifier. So the first thing you want to do in LT SPICE, um, which is what you normally do whenever you add a component, is you go up to this components icon, click on it. And what we'll do is we'll go down to this NMOS uh, entry and hit OK and then left click and right click and now we've got a generic uh, N channel MOSFET and what we will do is we will see if, if there is a built-in model for this IRF 540N. So we will right click and here you can see we've got the option to pick a new MOSFET. So I will click on this and here is a list of all different manufacturers MOSFETs and you can see here I've got Infineon and if you scroll down we've got uh, Fairchild and more Infineon and International Rectifier. So we said ours was an International Rectifier IRF 540N. So let's see if we've got an IRF 540N. Doesn't look like we've got one in the built-in libraries. We've got IRFH, but not any IRF. We can now think about looking elsewhere to get this model. So as we said before, um, LT Spice is from Linear Technologies. That's what the LT means. And they are now partnering with Analog Devices, which is another huge um, electronics manufacturer. And of course, in LT Spice, there are a lot of, um, there's a big library of linear technologies and analog devices uh, components. Um, ours is not um, either of those, so we're going to have to look elsewhere. Um, so we also just tried to look at some of the other manufacturers' uh, libraries that are inside LT Spice. And that's when we added the component and pick a new MOSFET. Um, just for information, that library of other manufacturers' components is located at, generally it will be in Windows under C, Users, and then your username, Documents, LT Spice, in this case 17, uh, Library, Components, and there's a huge library file called standard.mos, which has a lot of the um, other manufacturers' MOSFET uh, files inside it. It's a huge file and they've got other ones in the same location of different types of other manufacturer components. But anyway, we didn't find it in any of those locations. So what I like to do is go online to find SPICE models. Since this is an international rectifier slash Infineon, again international rectifier is now part of Infineon, um, since this is an IRF model uh, I like to go to this website here, which is um, irf.com slash product dash info slash models slash saber. Uh, and it's got here, it's a very sparse website, but it's got spice models and saber models. And you can download a library of either spice or saber uh, models. So all you have to do is click on the Spice library and, it will, library and it will download a zip file that's got a whole ton of um, international rectifier models. And uh, we'll look in there to see if it's available in there. So you download it, you unzip the file, and then you go back into LT Spice. And here we are back in LT Spice. And what I did is I found the uh, INF 540N, which is the model we were looking for, and it's a .spi for .spice file. So it's really easy to import that into LT Spice. What I'm doing is I'm just dragging and dropping the .spi file into um, LT Spice, and you can see it automatically opens up this um, SPI file. And it is a um, text file, and it's got the description of this IRF 540N MOSFET. And you can see on the very, very top line is a very, very important line here. It's a dot subcircuit 
space IRF 540N, and it's got the pin numbers for the uh, MOSFET. And this is how you're going to import this into LT Spice. And you can see, as you go down here, it's got a bunch of um, text uh, comments. And here it's got a dot model line, which defines some of the model par parameters. Another dot model, another dot model, another dot model. And then it's got the um, sub-circuit identifier for the thermal model. But all of this data defines this IRF 540N. Now, it's like I say, it's very easy to bring this into um, LT Spice. You just go up to this very top line where it says dot sub-circuit IRF 540N, right click, and go down and say create symbol, okay? And answer yes, do you want to create a symbol? Yes, I do. And there you go, it has now imported that and created this default symbol, okay? And now, if I want to bring that into my circuit, I go back to my blank circuit, and if I want to bring it in, I go to the components again, but in this case, I scroll over to the auto-generated. And here I've got, under listed under auto-generated, the IRF 540N that I just brought in. And all I do is hit OK, and here I can left click and then right click and I have now imported that IRF 540N all ready to go into my circuit. So real easy um, and now we're all set to go. The One of the really, really, really important parts of this though you got to pay attention to is figuring out what these pins are. All right, one, two, and three. To do that you have to go back to that file and if you look down here, it says node 1 equals drain, node 2 equals gate, node 3 equals source. So 1, 2, 3 are drain, gate, and source, all right? Um, that may be a little bit confusing, but you got to know that drain, gate, and source is 1, 2, 3. So what I've done behind the scenes is I, I quickly redid this a little bit so it's a little bit clearer to understand. I mirrored this um, MOSFET so that the one terminal is facing to the right. So it looks a little bit more like you used to see with the gate on the left and the drain on the right and the source going to ground. So you can do this however you want. And I use these, um, I use this naming uh, net name icon to just add these names to the to each of the terminals to make it a little bit clearer to understand. So now we're pretty much all set. We know that we've got the drain here, we got the gate, and we got the source. So what we'll do is we will apply a ground to the source, as is usually the case. And then what we'll do is we will get a voltage. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to pick a voltage. So I have a voltage source here. Left click, then right click. And I'll get another ground here, and then left or right click to get rid of that. And then I'll wire this up to the gate. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply, uh, we'll start with three volts. And then here what we'll do is we will apply a um, a drain voltage, so we'll do the voltage again, bring that over here, left click, right click, uh, add another ground connection down here, right click, and then what we'll do is we will also add a, um, well we'll wire it up and then we'll add a resistor in. So we've got that connected up, and then we'll add a resistor in here, and let's add that and make it a 10 ohm resistor. Okay, so that's our basic um, circuit we're going to use for the MOSFET to, to get a better understanding. Uh, I think in the next video what we'll do is we'll start doing some simulations and get a, a feel for what happens when you apply a voltage to the gate, what happens to the output, and stuff like that. So. I uh, hope this helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.